In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the MagPlus template and the MagPlus plugin and give you everything you need to know to start building your digital layouts. When you run the MagPlus installer, you'll see that it's going to put a folder inside of your Applications folder here in Applications called MagPlus. If you open that up, you'll see some MagPlus examples. These are just some pre-built layouts we've created that will include in here to show you how some of these things are done. So feel free to play with those. And some MagPlus templates. Now this is where you're going to want to start building any of your MagPlus layouts. You always want to start on the MagPlus template, not on a different InDesign document. These are specially made to work with the devices that you're trying to design for and with the MagPlus system. So you can see we support a number of different devices. Each one of these devices is a different screen size and a different output resolution. That's why we have different templates for each one of them. Now using our multi-device export function, you can lay out on one device template and export that layout to several other devices. There's a separate video on the multi-device export, so I won't go into that now. We're just going to start with one device, and uh, that's how you would probably start as well, with a single device, and then use the multi-device export to output elsewhere. I'll just start with the Apple iPad. If you look in here, you'll see two templates. The TOC template is for a special pop-down navigation feature that you can have optionally in your navigation of your app. That's covered in a separate video as well. We're just going to focus on the MagPlus template. This is your main creative template. This is what you're going to want to build all of your MagPlus layouts off of. And you can see in all these other folders the same things exist. So I'm just going to start by opening this up in InDesign. I'm running CS 5.5 here. And when you open up the MagPlus template, you'll see it's a bit of an odd shape. You've got a square here, and if I zoom way out, you'll see that it's very, very long compared to how wide it is. Now the reason for that is because of the MagPlus layers, the B layer and the A layer. And the A layer can scroll freely up and down, and you can have a lot of A layer content scrolling over a single B layer image. Now if that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, Go check out some of the other videos, including one specifically about layers, and we'll show you a little bit more as we start actually building this layout here. The point is that the reason the template's long is so that you can have this vertically scrolling content here. Now the reason that it's square is because MagPlus allows you to create one layout that'll work in both orientations. Over here in the Layers palette, you'll see that we have some extra layers here that are really just guides to show you what your layout's going to look like on the device. So if I turn on the device portrait, you'll see I get a little bezel of the iPad that'll show me in the portrait orientation which part of this template is actually going to be visible. Same thing if I turn it to landscape. And if I turn on the bezel, I see this cross shape, which is what I would use if I wanted to make one layout that works in both orientation using something we call pinning. Pinning is the ability to have objects move dynamically when the user rotates the device. That's also a separate video, so I won't get into that here. But the important thing to know is that you need to design within these boundaries if you want things to appear on screen when your user is holding the device. You can design in one orientation or the other, or you can use the pinning and design for both. We'll just design for portrait today to keep it simple. The other thing you notice over here in the layers palette are all these A and B layers. That's that layered architecture I was talking about. The A layer is your top free scrolling layer, and the B layer is your layer that moves in full screen slides. Now there's two of those because one is for the primary content, say the full screen content, and the other is for things that you want to pin on that background layer, things that you want to move dynamically. The pop-up layers are for creating hotspots that pop up additional content when the user taps them. If you don't have any of those, you can just ignore those. It's those main uh, A and B layers here that you're going to want to design on. Now looking over here into our plugin, there's a couple of things you're going to want to do when you first start designing your, your MagPlus page. The device section here you can pretty much leave alone because this is going to auto-populate based on what template you opened. In this case we opened up the Apple iPad, so it says Apple iPad is our output device here. Now the issue is really important. This is covered in the production tool uh, tutorial video, but just briefly, this is where you're going to export everything to when you're all done with this design and hit the export button. 
This is where it's going to send all of the converted assets and the XML and everything that, that our system writes to make this readable by the reader app. And this is where the production tool is going to look to render those pages out so that you can bundle them together into an issue. So just click folder. Now I've already created one here. I've got my sample issue uh, folder here. I've got all my InDesign documents in here. And I created a folder called issue folder and then the name of my issue. And inside of it, I created another folder for the Apple iPad. I like to make separate issue folders for each device because that's the way the multi-device export works. So it helps keep everything lined up. So this is where I'm going to want to export to. So I'm just going to select that and hit choose. If you haven't already created one, you can just create one there. Your issue folder can be anywhere you want it to be. You can name it anything you want. I just usually put it with the same issue so that everything's neatly in one place. Now the minimum MIB version here, MIB is our file format, and as we upgrade the system, there's new version numbers. This you can pretty much leave alone or just choose the most recent. The important thing as you begin working with Mag Plus and we come out with new updates, the thing you want to remember is that all of our new apps can always read back MIB. So if you're in the middle of a 3.5, uh, middle of an issue that's a 3.5 version, and you upgrade to a 4.0 app, that's fine. That'll read those issues uh, just fine for your users. What you don't want to do is start creating a 4.0 MIB, a 4.0 issue file, if your app is not 4.0 yet, if you haven't updated your app and gotten it approved by Apple. So the only time you might want to pull this down to a lower level is if the current app you have in the store is not the most recent version. You want to make sure that your users can read the issues that you're publishing. Now the ID and the name are each really important to know as well and you're going to want to touch these fields uniquely for each vertical or each page that you're creating. The ID is an internal name. This was never seen by your users but this is for you to reference what this page is called. So I'm going to call this fashion example. Now you don't want any spaces in here. Now the name is what the user will see. This is what's going to populate here we'll call that fashion ad. This is what's going to populate in the navigation, in the scrubber, and in different places within the app itself. When the user is scrolling through and looking at various pages, they're going to see the name of this page come up. So this you want to be something that makes sense to your users. It's going to make them want to go to that page. The reason we separate the two is that the ID is what gets reported out into all of our analytics systems, Omniture and Localytics, etc. So that when you're in looking at the back end of those and you're looking at stats for how many people read this page or how much time they spent on it, this ID is how that's going to be referred to. So what's really useful here is that if you've got uh, ads and edit or other ways that you want to code these pages so that they make sense to you when you're looking at your analytics, you can do that here. For instance, you could say add fashion example. And that way your user doesn't ever have to see this special code, but you can look at it in the back end. Orientation, uh, as I mentioned, MagPlus lets you design once to support both orientations. That's what auto means, so by default it's going to let you do that. But you can also lock the orientation in either direction if you want, to portrait or landscape. And you can do that on an issue basis using the production tool, or you can do it on a vertical by vertical basis here. So you can pick only some verticals or some pages that you want to be locked. Now, the background is just whatever color you want to show through where you don't have any content at all. And this will populate with whatever colors you have in your color palette. Knockback is another feature that's a little bit more advanced that we'll get into later. And the rest of these are slightly more advanced as well that you won't really need to pay much attention to when you first start laying out. But there's plenty of information about these in the support articles around the InDesign plugin. So now let's start making some content. I'm going to open up another file that has some content on it, so I've got some elements to populate this with. That would be what you might be doing if, say, you've got a print product already and you're trying to make a digital version of it. You would open up the print version. So let me uh, find my content here. We'll go into Sample Issue, iPad, and we'll go in here and just pick that one. So here you can see this is actually a MagPlus layout, but I'm going to recreate this for you so you can see how this was actually created. So if you're moving over from another layout, maybe a print layout, you'd have your images on here, you'd have your text boxes, etc. 
The great thing about MagPlus is that most of what you're doing in MagPlus is exactly what you do in print. It's just layout. All you're doing is being very intelligent and careful and creative about where you put all the various elements that make up your page. And the only thing that's really different is that your canvas is different. It has some unique abilities that your print page doesn't have. For instance, you can scroll things that that exist off of the screen that aren't always visible. You don't have to work within the hard edges of the, of the frame or of the screen uh, in this kind of a canvas. You've also got depth so you can do pop-ups and multiple layers and things scrolling over one another. And you've got that pinning ability so you can have things move when the user turns the device. So it adds an extra dimension to the layout but it's still just layout. So let me copy some things over here. We're gonna grab this big background photo and we're going to paste it in here. Now the important thing is just make sure you're pasting things on the layer you want it to be on. So I'm going to put this on the background layer because that's where I want this big image to be. And Then I'm going to grab this column of text. And You can see here I've actually got this all grouped together. So this is a, some bit of text and a pull quote and these couple of images and we've made them all into one big group just to make it kind of easy to move over. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste this onto my A layer. And I'll just put this right here for now. Now let's just take a look at this and see how that A and B layer are working together. One of the great things about MagPlus is the instant review capability that you have and that's through the MagPlus reviewer. Hopefully you've watched the tutorial on how to set that up already and you've got your InDesign plugin talking to your MagPlus reviewer. I've got my iPad next to me here on my laptop, but I'm going to use a program called Reflection App to mirror it up on the screen so that you can see what I'm seeing on my laptop or on my iPad screen rather. So here's my MagPlus reviewer. This is my library. Hopefully my two devices are connected here and talking to each other. I can just pop into settings and make sure it is. So yep, it's finding the right iPad there. Now I just have to save it. You're always going to have to save the document before to let you review it. So I'll go in here and just call this sample. And now all I have to do is hit fast review. Fast review means that it's going to use InDesign to do the image conversion and it's going to be kind of low res images. And that just means that that little process you saw is going to happen faster. Full review means it would trigger Photoshop to do all the image conversion. It would output everything at the right resolution for the target device. In this case, the Apple iPad is 132 pixels per inch. And you'd get a higher quality review. You'd get a review that looks exactly like what it's going to look like for your user. It just takes slightly longer to do. So fast review is great for checking things one, one at a time. Full review is a good idea to do once before you export. Export's going to do exactly what full review does, only it's going to put the files in your issue folder. So let's jump out to our iPad. So here you can see my layout. You can see that it looks just like it does here in the bezel, that I've got this little bit of space over here between the text box and the edge of the frame. I'm cropping her arm a little bit. Now you can see that because I put this text on the, on the A layer, it's going to scroll up as I move my finger up and down. I'm scrolling this text. That's the A layer moving over the top of this image that's on the B layer here. Now the cool thing about this dual layer design is that you can also allow the user to double tap the screen to turn off that A layer so that they can just look at the big beautiful imagery you have behind, be behind it rather and then they can double tap to bring that text back. So let's put a couple more elements on here. Let's grab our caption and our whole headline here. We're going to copy those. We've got these on the B layer as well. And I'll show you the effect of that when I put these on the B layer. So I'm just going to select my B main content because I'm not doing any pinning in this video. And we'll just pop this up here. I guess I better make the caption visible. We'll just put that up there. So you can see what I'm doing here is just regular layout. I'm just composing a page here uh, to look nice. Let me hit fast review and see how this turned out. All right, now you can see this isn't looking so great. I've got big white boxes behind my text. And even worse, when I scroll this up, I'm scrolling over the text. And because I've got some transparency, you can see that headline through. So, all right, this is a pretty ugly layout. Let's fix those big white boxes first. Now the reason those are coming through is because when I click the review button or export, when I turn this layout into a MagPlus file, 
What the system is doing is turning everything into images. All text becomes pictures. And because these text boxes are a separate element from the picture behind it, it's just turning these into pictures the size of their frame. That's obviously pretty ugly. It's not the effect that you want to have, but there's a really easy way around it. If you just group things together, the system will treat them all as one big image and it'll preserve that transparency. Now there's some other ways around it if we were using some of the other layers, but this is a, always a good first thing to know that grouping will usually solve most of the issues you're having. So I'm going to select all my uh, B slides main content and I'm just going to hit Control G or rather Command G to group those together. Let's just see if we solve that problem first and then we'll move some stuff around. There's my new layout coming through. Alright, well at least I solved it for my headline here. I didn't group in my caption, that's why that's still coming through that way. Yep, that's still alone. So I'm going to move that over to my pinned blocks layer. And let's just grab this while we're at it and put it somewhere where it won't move over the headline. And we'll put this down in the corner where it probably fits a little bit better. Now let's take a look at this and see if we've got a slightly nicer design. In fact, I'm going to put that all the way down off of the almost off of the screen so we get a lot of that nice image. Hit fast review. This is what you're going to want to do, especially when you're learning the system, is just keep trying stuff and hit and review. Uh, then play with it on your iPad. See if it looks and feels the way you want it to. So now let me scroll up. Okay, so that's a little bit better. And you can see because I moved that caption over to another layer, I didn't get that same white box behind it. That's really the basics of doing MagPlus layout. Now again, you can do uh, no A layer or no B layer, so you can have things only move in full screen slides or only scroll freely up and down, or you can have the both of these together. It's really entirely up to you. In other videos in this system, we'll go through adding pinning and snapping, which is a way of controlling where the A layer stops, as well as video, audio, HTML, and many of the other interactive things you can add to this. But the first thing to really wrap your head around and start playing with is just using this great infinite canvas that you've got to really explore the best ways to present your content.